Hello and welcome to Hormel TV. I'm your host, Mercy Konyak. And in today's Chill Out News, it's going to be something different. When we talk about music, music is a universal aspect of human existence. Music is and always has been a part of daily life for people around the world. When words fail, music speaks. And it helps bring people, connect people from various cultures and generations together. Like this, we are able to connect with an artist from Arunachal Pradesh, Takar Nabam, where we will get to know more about his musical journey. But before that, before we start, let's take a look at one video clip. When the sun rays first gleam over India, it strikes this beautiful land that is blessed with lush green forest and which is the abode of beautiful tribal communities and this land is Arunachal Pradesh. Also known as the land of the rising sun, Arunachal Pradesh is home to friendly, colorful and simple people and which is also a nature treasure home and which has a lurid scenic beauty and culture. The state has a lot to offer and now, coming from a place that cradles such incredible nature which is colorful and vibrant from the capital city of Arunachal Pradesh, Itanagar, a passionate singer, songwriter, guitarist, composer Takar Nabam has made his name in the country music scene. Music has been his best friend since he spent his schooling away from home. In 2002, Takar was gifted his first guitar on the condition that he would not let his academics take back seat. With a guitar on his hand, a soulful voice and deeply rooted with his culture, Takar started his new adventure and that's how it all started. Takar released many new songs and has collaborated with tons of renowned artists. Two of his music videos were aired on VH1 India. Apart from this, he has performed at some of the best music festivals in India and has also performed internationally, becoming the first artist from Arunachal Pradesh to perform in the United States. Takar has won many prestigious awards and even nominated under Guitarist of the Year in 2019. You could drive in your headlights out Cause a little bit of summer's what the whole year's all about Apart from winning many awards for his skills on the guitar, today he is one of the upcoming artists in the country and his melodious and catchy tunes with lyrics that people can relate with is making him a highly loved artist in the country. While it slowly burned down to ashes. So that is a beautiful video of Tucker. Now joining with us virtually, we have a visionary singer, songwriter, and guitarist Tucker Nabam. Hi, Tucker. Hi. Hello. Such Thank a so pleasure much. to have you on Hornbill TV, and yeah, it feels so great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good Hi. evening to you. Takar, how are you and how have you been doing? I'm, as of today, I'm doing really fine. I'm good. And, uh, you know, it's nice to be kind of uh, getting out of the uh, lockdown space and getting to meet real people and mm. getting to play and looking forward to doing that more uh, at a more, um, you know, regular scale as Mm. We weren't used to in the pre-pandemic era, so it's it's nice how things are kind of shaping wow. up now. Things are opening, so a lot of things to look forward to. Fantastic. So, Takara, what is normal life for you now that you are back in Arunachal? Uh, 
honestly the life in arunachal uh, mm. it's not uh, as uh, I, w- i wouldn't say like it's a very active music scene mm. so you know the the usual work is very lot of construction related work but besides that <laughs> um i could at least find people like who are uh, like minded and yes. who also have uh, the, uh, you know the have a thing for writing original music mm. so it's nice to be part of a small community we started something called the AIMF so mm. it's nice uh, since i moved back home mm. that after 2 years it's finally blooming into something mm. very beautiful so i'm liking it where it's going it's nice to be home here at this point Yeah. Wow, that's so nice. That's so nice. So, Takar, actually, I've come across your song called "Quite a Story," and it's something that okay. I had never thought I'll hear. How did you come up with this song? Tell us something about it. Uh, 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 yeah. So, firstly, uh, "Quite a Story" is it's kind of like a word play I mm. was doing. Uh, it's it's uh, I wanted to say like it's quite a story mm. but I I ended up making it quiet the story because mm. uh, you know when I moved back home the first thing that I felt uh, very uh, uh, I could say like something I missed out on was mm. staying away from home for that long yes. not knowing a lot great deal about my culture and also not being able to speak mm. my uh, native dialect so fluently so it kind of like threw me into a very uh, quiet kind of a space where uh you know i could not even connect and say things in my dialect and it mm. kind of you know the, the song kind of channelized that emotion mm. into it you know so it was very nice to write a song about it i guess it's a very different experience mm. and i wanted to throw in like some of the folk influences uh you know from here and there that i had gathered over the time i was staying here mm. so i mean that's pretty much it you know like mm. uh, my experience of uh trying to reconnect and learn about my culture mm. and my native dialect yeah uh, that's very nice so like you are deeply rooted with your culture and the way you put efforts to know your culture learn it and preserve it that's fantastic and do you think that yeah. you stay away from home your hometown since a child made you realize the essence of your roots and did absence make your heart grow fonder like they say what do you say what do you think <coughs> I mean, you know, uh, staying away had its own, uh, uh, you know, the plus sides and obviously the the, the bad, like the negative. Be that, you know, I I got exposure to so many different kinds of people, different cultures, and mm-hmm. got to see like a different part of the world, and mm-hmm. got to hear and play with so many other artists and. Learn about so many things that existed together. Mm. So I mean, staying away, you know, you kind of felt that you know uh, the need, you know, at least for me, like over the time, the mm. urge grew to know more about my culture, to mm. kind of go back and see what I could do, you know, to uh, at least help preserve the already dying culture, you know, because mm. it's a, it's more like an an oral tradition that we have, mm. you know, uh, and I feel that. thing it definitely kind of gave me that uh, you know gave inside my heart i had mm. that you know gut feeling that i should really do try and do something about it you know as an artist mm. uh, true, true. and when i got back you know it it was only natural for me to kind of uh, uh, try to do something in that mm. particular area so yeah i mean definitely had its impact on me staying mm. away That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Now you are back to Arunachal Pradesh. Now you have a beautiful wife and a beautiful daughter. So that's ah. really amazing. And you know, Takar, do people know that you are the first Arunachali to perform abroad? And also, what would you do? Like, what do you think is the difference between performing in India and abroad? Uh, I mean, very different setting, very different surrounding. Mm. Uh, Because when I uh, when I went performed abroad, people have exposure to a different kind of music, mm. and people when I perform here in India or in Arunachal, the exposure to music, different kind of exposure to music is there. The environment and the setting is wholly different, you know. Mm. So if I play a song,
Mm. Anybody mm. and as an artist, you're a little afraid how you your music will be perceived, whether it's going to be liked or disliked, or what's what's it going to be like, you know. So Lumen, I had a lot of questions, but uh, I just did my thing and I really had a nice time. I was taken by surprise how people seem to have enjoyed the performance. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! You, you not only represented Arunachal, but you have represented the Northeast. So, like everyone is so proud of you. And Sitakar, would you want to know, you know, want to be known as someone who is revered as a guitarist, or would you want to be known as a singer? Hello. Yes, Sitakar, can you hear us? I think there is some technical issue, but before that, uh, before we connect with him, we will play a view, video of Tucker, so we'll play it on the screen. This man, he left as a boy, about seven or eight two long decades till he was home again mm. they were all ears to listen to the story of a man who left sadly as a boy story He heard his heart beat They felt his heart speed He stuttered So that is Tucker, beautiful song, and due to technical issue, we couldn't uh, we couldn't have a connection with Tucker. But we are getting back, and it can be it is already resolved. So we are getting back to Tucker. Yes, Tucker. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello, all right. Okay, we can connect it, and it feels so good again. So, so uh, would you want to be known? You know, as uh, you know, would you want to be known as someone who is revered as guitarist or would you want to be known as a singer, as I've already mentioned earlier? Uh, guitar is definitely going to be my first love because that's how my connection to music started. Mm. And song, songwriting and singing came a little later. Mm. So uh, deep down inside my heart, yeah. I am a guitar player. Yes, yes, but, yes. Uh, yeah, so, but I got a guitar, guitar player in the sense like I'm not uh, running after like crazy guitar chops and stuff nowadays. Mm. 
yes, more about true, true. music for me like you know mm. if i can communicate my message through my music and my words and to my singing that's that's uh, you know that's who i am really Mm, yeah. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So uh, I've came across that in 2002 you were gifted with a guitar. So tell me about it. How does it feel when you first receive a guitar from your family? I was uh, thrilled beyond my expectation. Mm. I didn't know how to react. I got my first Gibson guitar. Mm. Those were the only guitars that were available back in the day. At least, or at least that's that's the only company I knew of. Uh, So the funny thing is, uh, I was still in school, and so I told my father that I wanted to, you know, get hold of a guitar so badly. Mm. And they're coming from a background where, like, paying so much more attention to the academic side of things. Mm. He so told me to. He told told me to like write a letter, mm. and, uh, like address to him, just like promising, like not to let my grades uh. take a backseat. You know, if I, you know, start playing the guitar, mm. because the impression was like, you know, if you're a, If you're playing a guitar, if you're in a band, you'll probably be like busy doing a lot of other mm. the other stuff, like living a very decadent kind of lifestyle, uh, drinking, you know, uh, going after girls mm. and doing all sorts of things, you know, like not focusing on your life and career and stuff. Mm. So I did write it that back then, and quite sincerely, I practiced my instrument. Mm. In fact, the first day I got it, I played it for at least eight to ten hours, mm. and by Third, third or fourth day, my fingers were already like bleeding, you know. Mm. So all the the skin came off and also it was a very uh, exciting time, you know, trying to like a kid trying to press the button and see what does this button mm. do, what does this button do, what does this one do. Mm. So yeah, I mean that was that was quite a lot of fun. Wow, that's I kind of miss those times. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So Tucker, being a family man, how do you balance your professional and family life? Tell us something about it. I I think like you know it's it's just a matter of uh, prioritizing things as as things come your way mm. Mm. you know but I at least for me now like I feel family is first for me obviously mm. uh, I mean I've written I've, I keep writing my music and I know that that's something that's not going to uh, you know that's not some, that is something that I stay with me till I'm alive you know mm. so uh, I think. You know, when I have to give priority to the family, at this point of time, I will give priority to the family. If I have little spare spare time, I will dedicate that to writing my songs and maybe like doing performances and all of that. But at no point in time, I see something like like you know, one one is falling apart and the other one is just staying right there. Mm. So it's it's kind of like um, you know, they both need to have its own balance because um, without the music, you know, I don't get my. Uh, Creative outlet, and I am I'm, I'm an artist, to the core. So I need that uh, side of me, of course. And I love my family, no doubt. I just have to find my way, figure out how I'm going to manage my time. Mm. In fact, I'll just share you a, uh, an instance. If I, when I wake up really early in the morning, let's mm. say about 5:30, I'm an early riser, by the way. Oh. So wow. uh, if I if I wake up really early, the first thing I do, I'll just step out of the room before my daughter wakes up. Mm. I'm just going to practice some guitar. Uh, just learn some stuff, or you know, whatever I have to work on. And by mm. the time it's like seven or something, my daughter is always already awake, mm. and I'm, I need to go and like uh, do take care of all my father his fatherly responsibilities. So mm. yeah, it's kind of tricky, but uh, mm. I'm somehow trying to work things out. Mm. Gets a little stressful, but I guess you know, if you know what you have to do, you'll do it. Mm. Yeah. That's very true. It feels so good how you manage and how you balance your personal life and also your professional. It feels so great. And Tucker, we all know we have this inspiration and we look up to somebody. So, who were your inspiration? You know, who was uh, some of your inspiration? Who inspired you in the world of music? Can you tell us something about it? Uh, I mean, I I grew up listening to a lot of different music uh, as a child. Mm. I used to enjoy a lot of 90s pop. I used to like uh, a lot of rock and roll, like Guns N' Roses and all of that. Mm. But uh, over time, my taste for music changed quite a lot. Mm. I started liking a lot of progressive music like Porcupine Tree mm. and even rock and roll bands uh, like Extreme, mm. Incubus, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and. A lot of John Mayer for sure uh, over a certain period of time, mm. and 
and then also like a lot of jazz music uh, uh, musicians from the old times like Charlie Parker, John mm-hmm. Coltrane. So those are the you know the old old time cats uh, mm-hmm. are some somebody that are, are the people that I really look up to and like there's so many things to kind of learn and like you know grasp from the older tradition. Mm-hmm. So uh, not one per- particular person I would say as a musical hero, but mm-hmm. if I had to name a couple of them, John Mayer would be one that comes to me for sure. Mm. And uh, maybe from the older times, uh, Tali Parker, mm. uh, John Coltrane, yeah. So wow. those were some of the musical heroes that I kind of grew up. And also uh, Derek Trucks, mm. amazing slide guitar player, that one artist that I really loved over the last couple of years. Yeah. Mm. Wow, that's that's so good. That's so good. So, so when you write your songs, what are you expecting that the listener would take from themselves? As a songwriter, I the, mm. my only hope is that uh, even if it connects to one single person, and if uh, the single person can interpret the song in their own way, their own colorful way, mm. or can connect to what I'm trying to say exactly, mm. I think my job as a songwriter is done. You know, mm. so I just hope that it connects to people mm. at a deeper level, and um, mm. yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. You know. I just hope they connect to it. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. So, is there any project that you are working on, Tucker? Is there any project coming up? Yeah, I have. I have a few songs releasing this year, as uh, as a part of an EP that I'm working on. Um, so, one of them is releasing on the first of April. Oops, did I say it? Anyway, so it's releasing on first of April. Uh, uh, I know the name and stuff in the coming days and on my socials. Uh, and then there are some collaborations also that I worked on, which will be released, I guess, in a, a month later, maybe in the month of May, and some releases June, July, and all of that. And hopefully, uh, we'll be able to be uh, on the road, traveling uh, to other parts of the country and performing because that's something that I've really missed for a long, long time. So I want to do that. Thank you so much. So, uh, Takar, how can you rate the music scene in Arunachal Pradesh? Rating as in like rating out of five, ten, uh, what exactly? Mm. Uh, so, what is exactly is your view on t- the music sh- scene in Arunachal Pradesh? Uh, I feel that uh, so now people have kind of started to open their ears to other forms of music. Mm. Like there's a lot of folk fusion happening, a lot of indie also happening. Mm. Uh, rock and roll is still there, alive, you know, it's been there for the longest time. Bollywood is the most dominant. Uh, but I feel like people have kind of diversified their uh, music music listening library from mm. just Bollywood to a whole bunch of mm. uh, other styles of music, which I think is very important or a very vibrant seen to kind of like you know grow mm. so we don't want like one particular genre uh, scene where people are everybody's listening to one artist or one kind of music so we want diversity you know and there's wow. it's really nice to see the whole the diversity part of the music uh, listening habit of people it's kind of like branching out and people are slowly slowly exploring the newer stuff especially with the uh, the advent of the uh, internet here, people are people have more connectivity here, even in the remotest parts of the uh, of the villages and all, which is quite nice. And mm-hmm. I think this is this is going to help people get exposed to a lot of other forms of music, and people are going to become more open-minded to you know mm-hmm. to infusion of uh, folk with other styles and all, which is something that I have also been uh, trying to do and enjoying myself. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's fantastic, fantastic. So, uh, Takar, this is going to be the last questions. And, uh, yeah, congratulations on the new single release with Mahesh and the Fortune Music called Our Century. Yes. How does it feel, like, connecting with different artists and also collaborating with them? How do you feel? I think uh, we are living in a time where collaborations are, like, one of the most, most uh, uh, important things to do because, uh, you know, mm. s- staying away like staying not not performing live, not getting to jam with people in, in person, it has become extremely challenging. 
Mm. But even like staying remotely, like you know, staying far away from each other, we can do all kind of stuff working from like little home studios that we have and still put our song together. Mm. So I feel like it's it's an interesting experience because you get to see another side of you as an artist which existed but you didn't see, uh, you know, when you were, while you were I doing your own stuff. Mm. So people appreciate, let's say like they appreciated the fortune, they appreciated my guitar playing skills mm. and they thought that my uh, ideas on the guitar would sit well with their ideas and I tried doing that and they seem to enjoy what I did and it, they had their suggestions and it was interesting to see how, you know, things kind of uh, work over the span of time while you were working on the song. And when Mahesh caught on board, it got even more exciting because mm. he has an amazing voice. He's a very skilled singer and does things very effortlessly. Mm. And I already knew Mahesh for a, for a long time. Mm. Uh, and even the Fortune, I just got to know them like about a year ago. So it was kind of nice to uh, have everybody on the board and mm. like, almost felt like we were jamming to the song even why even even if we haven't like you know i haven't met the fortune yet in person mm. i have met my age like five or six years back mm. so it was nice it's very different and uh, the whole dynamics is completely different from let's say sitting in one room and working on a song together mm, true, true. yeah so it's it's truly said music connects people and so thank you so much Tucker for joining on Hornbill TV such a productive and uh, such you. a uh, great you. time we all have and all the best for your future endeavor lots of love and blessings from Nagaland thank you so much thank, thank you so much thank you so much Hornbill TV thank you much to Hornbill TV team mm. So viewers, uh, viewers can go and check him out on IG, Facebook and YouTube and don't forget to listen and download his songs on Spotify. So that's all we have for now. For more entertainment news, don't forget to tune in at 1.30pm only on Hornbill TV. Chill out. Thank you.